What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode and today I am super excited because we got the Chihiro's RGB Vivid 2. So for this video, we're going to do a quick unboxing of this, test the light, play with the app, and finally we're going to hang it up onto the 90P. But since I have the WRGB2 as well, I thought it would be a good idea to kind of compare the two lights. So with no further ado, let's get to unboxing. Alright, this came all the way from China, so it's a little bit wear and tear. And here's the light. I gotta say, it is a pretty hefty light. Right underneath, the cord, power brick, certificate, the rest of the cord and you actually get a set of hanging wires. Let's take a look at the light first and we'll connect it and see what's up. Now, first and foremost, right off the bat, you'll notice this have really, really deep grooves. And also, I'm not sure if you can see it, the fan is right in here. On the side, there's more grills to help dissipate the heat and this is where you get to hang it. For this particular light, it is only to be hung. They don't have any type of bracket to actually sit on the tank itself. The light is a bit smaller, but it is a bit more powerful than the WRGB2. Now, I'm just gonna put it on a scale. Oh, what? Four pound, 6.6 .6 ounces. Well, let's plug it in and see uh, how bright this thing is. I do have to say the wiring on this specific Chihiro's light is hella, hella long. Plug this in the living room and power aquarium back in my bedroom. Let's connect it to our app. So let's search for light WRGB Vivid. Full power, baby. Oh, this is something interesting for this light. So you don't really get this with the WRGB or any other Chihiro's light, but it gives you power consumption on here. All the white lines that are here is basically 100%. But just in case, for whatever reason, you want a lot more red, like you want 115% more red, you could do that. But it plays into the power consumption. So if I'm currently at 115 with the red, I'm already at 99 watts. So with the other ones, I could go 100 on this, but the max I could go on blue is 79 because I've already used up all the power, so this is kind of cool. The one thing about the Chihiro's app, it's not the best app. Oh, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Wow. Okay, let's flip that back around. The fan is on. You could kind of hear it. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention, even though this light is a little bit stumpy at 45.5 centimeters or 18 inches, it is rated for tanks all the way up until 90 centimeters, so it should do fine on my 90p. The WRGB2 is rated at 100 watts. This is at 130 watts. Now, WRGB2, it has 6,200 lumens. This has 5,500 lumens. Now, if we're talking about the amount of LEDs that are in these lights, and both these lights use the same type of LEDs, the WRGB2, it has 90 LEDs. This has 160. The WRGB is much longer light. Obviously it stretches all the way across the 90P and this only 45.5 centimeters or 18 inches. But this is a wider light by an inch versus that. Let's see, about four and a quarter. That's about a bit more than five and a half. So it's about an inch deeper, but it loses a lot in length. So 
With this type of light, my only concern is the coverage on the whole entire tank. But to combat that, I would really have to dial in on the height of the Vivid 2 to try to cover the whole entire tank. Yeah, don't let me down. All right, so a lot has changed since I did the unboxing and the initial review of the Vivid 2. After I slapped the Vivid 2 on my previous tank, the tank was not getting the proper amount of coverage. So I rescaped it. As you can see, I changed it to a triangular scape, more towards the left, and I took the light from up top and moved it towards the left side of the tank, just so all the planks could get the proper lighting. Now obviously this is all my very humble opinion. Comparing the Vivid 2 to the WRGB2, they essentially use the same LEDs. This is basically just more power. As mentioned before, power wise, the Vivid 2 is 130 watts and the WRGB2 is 100 watts. In terms of part data, the Vivid 2 right at the bottom at 50 centimeters is about like 280 par. The WRGB2 at 55 centimeters gets about 180. The main issue for this light, at least for me, on this 90 centimeter tank is the coverage. The coverage absolutely sucks, but that's only based on using one light. I feel like in order for me to get full coverage on a 90 centimeter tank, I would have to get two Vivid 2s. You could argue that I could just raise the light a bit higher well, way higher to get better coverage for the whole entire tank. Then I'll have to turn on the power on this light, and to me, that is like wasted power. I'm literally utilizing more power on this light and electricity just to cover a tank. I mean, at that point, I might as well just get a single WRGB2 that's able to cover the entirety of the tank from left to right. The coverage on front to back, obviously the Vivid 2 has an advantage just because it is a way fatter, wider light but I don't think I'll be losing much from the WRGP2. I mean, it all depends on what you're doing, where you're escaping, the type of plants you're growing. The Vivid 2 is very concentrated, so majority of the power will be coming within the 45 centimeter zone. Outside of that, you're losing power, and also, if you're building a wood skate, such as what I have right here, if the light is coming down on the wood skate, whatever plants on that side is not getting a lot of light. If I had WRGB2, I would have had a light source directly on top of all of the plants. Maybe if you had a Iwagumi or a Dutchscape, I think a Vivid 2 might work for 90p. Otherwise, you might have to get two Vivid 2 to do the job of one WRGB2. So in what situation is the Vivid 2 good for? If you have a 60 centimeter tank, right? I think a Vivid 2 will work out maybe a 45 centimeter tank even. All depends on what type of plants you're growing, right? You have something like a 120 centimeter tank or larger. Then you would need two Vivid 2s blasting into the tank. Or if you have a tank that's really, really tall, uh, let's say if you have a tank that's like 75 centimeters tall, right? You might need a Vivid 2 just so the light can reach all the way to the bottom of the tank. Outside of that, I think the WRGB2 more than covers 
a lot of people's skates, a lot of people's tanks, and a lot of people will be satisfied with the WRGB2. For me, why spend the money on the Vivid 2 if the WRGB2 does just as well? Now, I'm not knocking the Vivid 2. I actually like the light. You know, I wanted it to work, but it just doesn't work for 90p. The other thing is, remember I mentioned about the, the fan noise? As I'm talking to you, I hear it. If you have a skate that's in a really, really quiet room, that might be a little bit annoying. To me, the WRGB2 seemed like a very well-rounded light. Like, it's a good overall light that anybody could use to grow any type of plants that they want. The Vivid 2 is really for specific cases. In order to get the best bang for the buck and to use the entire 280 par hitting the bottom of the tank, if you're growing some crazy plants and you're a experienced, experienced professional for the everyday aquascapers and planted tank lovers, I think the WRGB2 is your best bet over the Vivid 2. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and of course, share this video with a friend. Just a little teaser for my next light showdown. I actually purchased the Twinstar 900SM Light 3, and I will be doing a light comparison between the Twinstar 900S version 2 with the version 3.